Hey guys, Ryan here, and let's talk Season 3 Megazords. And of course, we're starting with the one so good they named it twice. The Ninja Mega Falcon Zord, or Ninja Falcon Megazord. Originally, I was going to start with Ninja Megazord and do Falcon Zord separately, and that was because of how they were originally released. But that seemed like doing them a disservice, because in the show, and indeed in the movie, they were always in tandem. All six Ninja Zords appeared at the same time. And so, that's how we're going to treat this review. It just doesn't seem right to keep them apart when I think the only reason they were sold separately was to maintain a price point. Let's talk toy history. So in Kaku Ranger in Japan it was known as the Kakur Dai Shogun. I think that's how you say it. And it was actually their second Megazord and third God General to be introduced in that season. They actually made a plot point of it having no weapons because it represented technique. And the Falcon Zord, one of their other god generals, represented heart. How very Captain Planet. Meanwhile, in Power Rangers Season 3, they flipped the Megazord introduction, so we actually got this one first, and we'd already seen it in the movie, albeit looking slightly different. In their defence, it was probably early days for CGI in kids' films. However, we have just seen the Falcon Zord return to TV screens this year, and it was about on par. So this one's a bit of a strange one for me because we actually got our first glimpse of it in the movie in the summer, but that was the year that season two was airing. And during Christmas is when we finally got the Tiger Zord and Tour Deluxe toys. However, they were promoting the movie line alongside it, so we ended up getting an intermediate version of the Ninja Mega Falcon Zord, which didn't combine, but the Falcon Zord could be clipped on and off. It also notably came with a power sword, although it was technically just an enlarged version of the Ape Zord sword. I think that's probably why people misremember the Ninja Megazord as having a power sword. They're either remembering the one from the movie which was based on the Shogun Megazord power sword, or maybe they're remembering the one that came with this toy. I think in America they actually released the Ninja Megazord and Falcon Zord in movie branded packaging, although those didn't seem to reach us in the UK, so it wasn't actually until the summer of 96 when another fateful family holiday to Ireland in Roach's stores, I finally found the Deluxe Ninja Megazord on the shelf. Unfortunately, they didn't have the Falcon Zord on the shelf though, and I think it would be a number of months. I'm pretty sure it was the November when we finally saw it on the shelf of a toy shop where we live. I can see from the price sticker that this cost us 35 Irish pounds back in the day, which was actually less than we'd paid for the Thunder Megazord the year before, although that was a lot bigger and this technically had less going for it. In the UK, the Falcon Zord only cost about £15, but it was only really a glorified backpack add-on. Now, waiting for the Tiger Zord when we already had the Deluxe Thunder Megazord was one thing, but waiting for the Falcon Zord when you already had the Ninja Megazord was just something else completely. While we were waiting for the Deluxe Falcon Zord to make itself known, we were trying a few DIY solutions, like we occasionally would sellotape that intermediate Falcon Zord onto the back of the Ninja Megazord. Because, well, you couldn't play Power Rangers, have six rangers, and then have the leader take a seat and chill every time the giant monster attacked. Let me tell you how ridiculous that looked. The wings didn't even emerge from behind the arms. Also, top toy tip, don't put sellotape on your Megazords, because it'll take you ages to get the residue off, and there's actually a little bit of discoloration, because some of it was on there longer than others. Oh, by the way, I think I finally worked out why our boxers in England didn't say Mighty Morphin in the logo. Pretty sure it's because they would have been released in multiple territories, and while Power Rangers would become the umbrella term that everyone knew, Mighty Morphin was just a few too many English words. You'll probably notice if you've ever seen other countries' versions of the Power Rangers logo, the Power Rangers bit always is in English, but the season subtitle is always translated. On to the design. I both do and don't like the look of this thing, I remember feeling confused and annoyed, and this is ridiculous, that it didn't look like the one from the movie. But I suppose fair enough that it did resemble the one from the TV show. Bit of a contradiction I always thought. In Megazord mode, the animal motif is really obvious and striking in the bear, frog and falcon zords, but it's been hidden away in the other three zords. I also never got why they did the fist covers to kind of humanise the ape and wolf zords when it didn't matter for the others. 
Plus it meant there were other pieces that were essential for the Megazord mode, which as you all know, I'm not a fan of. They actually went so far as to engineer spaces on the Bear Zord that could store the fist covers, but I think that just ruins the design of the Bear Zord and the back one falls off way too easily. As Zords, they were a real ragtag bunch of all shapes and sizes. What I liked about that though was that you didn't have two Zords that were obviously alike, like you got in the year before's Thunder Megazord legs. In fact, if you think about most year's Megazord designs, every time you've got a Megazord where two Zords form two legs, they're pretty much going to be identical. Whereas when you have Zords that stack on top of each other to form two legs, they at least combine together differently. Here, for the first time in Power Rangers, you've got two Zords forming two different arms. And although they've done some work to make them look kind of the same, the way you get to that point is very different. Another thing that bothered me back then was how small the Red Ranger's Zord was after two seasons of his Zord kind of being the focal point of the Megazord. And though the Falcon Zord is the biggest of the Ninja Zords, it's actually a big step down for Tommy after the Tiger Zord, which was bigger and transformed. But most of all though, I really liked that we once again had a six Zord Megazord and that Tommy had been fully integrated into the team and stopped being such an outsider. Oh, and Kimberly's Zord is absolutely tiny. However, after only being a chest shield and a skirt in the previous Megazords, being the head is actually probably a bit of an upgrade for what would be her final Zord. Something that I always liked about the Ninja Zords in the series, and actually in the movie, was seeing them in the city. You know, because we'd had two years of the normal Zord summoning stock footage where they just appeared in these big empty spaces. I really liked here that the Ninja Zords, which are mostly forest animals, are always appearing in this urban city. It was a really great contrast. What are the differences to the Japanese original? Well, we're starting with our old favourite, it's the stickers. Lightning bolts continue because of course they do, but this was actually, at the time, a product line best. There were only two of them and they only appeared on one of the Zords. I think you can tell a bit of a change in strategy in stickers and it kind of feels like they're winding down with the whole lightning bolt approach. Don't get me wrong, the Shogun Megazord next is probably one of the most horrendous for stickers and lightning bolts. But from this, you get the impression that maybe the tide is changing. In Japan, the Ape Zord's two swords were in gold chrome, whereas our version were in a horrible, cheap, bendy gold plastic. Also, the Crane Zord's neck was red, which is how it appears in the show, although in the toy version it's been changed to pink. I found it really strange that they'd done that, because they didn't make the Firebird Thunder Zord pink. However, I guess this was the year where they just really wanted to turn Zords pink, as we'll see, especially with the Shogun Megazord. What's obviously the granddaddy difference is that the Falcon Zord in Japan had lights and sounds. Even as a kid, I'd had way too many toys that required batteries not to equate a slot that size as storage for two double A's. Also, the wingtips were so obviously meant to light up. It is a shame that they ditched the electronics from our version. I think it was the first time they did something major to the American version of the Japanese toy in order to reduce the cost of it. Yes, of course, we'd had a lot of material changes up until and including then, but this was the first time they'd taken a feature away. And that surely was a risky move. What's bad about this toy? Well, it's quite obviously showing its age. Stickers are peeling or are just gone, like for example the eyes of the crane zord on mine. Then annoyingly there's the sunlight fade. Those of you that have been watching my videos for a while will know that we foolishly would display our Megazord toys in the window when we were done with them and over time the UV got to them and so the back of this Megazord has been adversely affected. Fortunately, in a way, the Falcon Zord backpack was actually protecting a lot of it, although that meant that it took the brunt of it. The damage was so bad that I actually replaced my Falcon Zord a couple of years ago. Although, of course, I still have my original because, well, who's going to want it? And it is kind of cool to be able to do the Ninja and Shogun combinations side by side. I'm not so keen on all the material changes that went on. Yes, we do have the chrome piece that fits in the Bear Zord mouth, but the changes to the Ape Zord swords were atrocious. The plastic was so weak and brittle that I've actually had to glue it back together in order to get the staff mode back. I really don't like that the Ape Zord's feet are all in one piece. 
That's actually the first of three times that will happen in this season's toy line. Also a bit of a tangent, but doesn't the Ape Zord look like he's wearing rubber gloves? The other thing to point out is the use of the grey plastic on the fist covers and the frog legs and feet. I think that looks the most retro and it's something that was fixed to really great effect in the Legacy version. Back in the day something about this toy always seemed a little bit off and I couldn't put my finger on it but when I got the Legacy version I realised it was the proportions. I think it's because Bandai Japan really prioritised the look of the Zords individually whereas we've seen with Bandai America they tend to prioritise a streamlined look of the Megazord. It kind of reminds me of, is it Heimlich from the end of A Bug's Life when he grows his butterfly wings but he's still got his big caterpillar body. Because of that whole big bird backpack, this was the first Megazord toy we'd had that seemed to like to fall backwards during play. I'd say Bandai were definitely aware of that risk and that's why they added the stabilizers to the back of the frog's feet. That's one advantage I guess to the Falcon Sword not having a battery compartment in it because it would have just been more weight trying to pull it backwards. Oh, maybe that's why they took it out. However, that problem mostly would have been because we would have been playing on the floor on carpet. If you have this thing on a hard surface, it's all good. Another irritating factor of the Ninja Megazord is that it's the simplest Megazord to date. What I mean by that is that there's no secondary mode in between the individual Zords and the combined Megazord mode. Does that make it a third mode? Anyway, we had the tank in Season 1 and we had, I guess, the chariot in Season 2. But unfortunately, the Ninja Megazord kicks off a trend where having a mid-combination mode and yes, it's probably a bit of a stretch to call the chariot a mid-combination. Is it going to be the exception and not the rule in the Megazord line? What's great about this toy? Clicks. As odd as it sounds, this is one satisfying robot. 22 years on and this thing is still just as sturdy as the day we got it. And after the faff that was the Thunder Megazord the year before, it was a relief not to be constantly fighting helmets, arm coverings and skirts popping off all the time. In the show, this thing flew around a lot once the Falcon Zord was attached, and in the toy version, lifting it from the Falcon Zord is actually the best way to do it, something the Legacy version wasn't able to replicate. Something else that worked way better in the 90s? Arm joints. What I've realised about the Ninja Zords recently is that they had a lot more articulation than the Zords before them. The Falcon, Wolf and Bear Zords all had mouths that open, plus movable parts to customise their poses. Equally, the Frog Zord has so much movement in its front flippers and legs that you can try a lot of different things with it. The Ape Zord fortunately has arm rotation and its weapons. The Crane Zord unfortunately is the worst of the bunch. But compare the Ninja Zords as a whole to the Thunder Zords from the year before it, where you literally had a nice Red Ranger Zord and four bricks to go with it, you can see a lot of efforts gone into adding more playability to this season's swords. I especially liked that each Ninja Zord had a totally different transformation. They all required work. It's not a case of just snap it on like you see as the combination method in all of the modern Megazords. Having a totally unique transformation for each Zord in a Megazord is very rare and we wouldn't see that again until the Super Zeo Megazord in 3 Megazords time. I like that this is a 5 Zord Megazord with an optional 6 Zord mode. Brilliant. The fact that the Kaku Rangers 5 Ranger team had this as their mecha but that it actually fitted perfectly with what was happening in America in Power Rangers is just epic when understood as an older fan. Yes, it's a very simple transformation and it might not actually have as much going for it as the Thunder Megazord did. But they still surprised us, like how half of the bear zord's mass just vanishes and how the frog zord expands to like twice the size. These were things we hadn't seen before, so it was pretty fun that season 3 led with some new surprises. It also didn't hurt that at the time this was the only megazord we'd ever seen on the big screen. It made it seem a lot more important and therefore you had to have it. Ninja Mega Falcon Zord was a joy of a toy. Bright, vibrant colours, pop and contrast, on a frame of black and white and it was actually the first time, at least in the toy version, where all six ranger colours were represented. Sure it didn't have a power sword but we were told it didn't need one and it was actually refreshing that they could change up how they finished off the monsters. It's stable as a brick which made it more fun and reliable and lastly that wingspan is very impressive and to my recollection hasn't been beaten since. That's it then, my thoughts on Ninja Mega Falcon Zord. What do you guys think of this toy? Let me know in the comments below. I've got two more videos coming in my Season 3 Zord reviews, so make sure you're subscribed if you're not already, because you know what's coming up next? Yep, they got another Megazord that year, and I'll see you next time.